Hey guys, welcome to the Hack Existence tutorial on building a hacker's nightlight. So by the end of this video, I'll show you guys how to take this stock smart light bulb and turn it into this, the hacker's nightlight. Physically, these look exactly the same, but this one boasts a malicious firmware that's capable of deauthing clients. And my favorite function is the ability for the light bulb to actually sniff the WPA2 handshake when that client automatically reconnects to the wireless network, which can then be extracted and run through something like Aircrack NG, bang up against a dictionary attack that can potentially expose the WPA2 passphrase. So looking under the hood, the reason that this attack is possible is because the chipset that controls this smart light bulb is the ESP32C3. So by dropping this chipset into DFU mode, we're able to flash a malicious firmware from Hack5Peaks, where he basically ported a deauthor firmware, but first went through the trouble to reverse engineer the stock firmware so that we still have full control over the colors of of the LED boards. So let's take a look at the control interface for this attack. All right, now we can see we've got our hacker nightlight all plugged in and turned on. I've connected the iPad to the nightlight SSID and gone to 192.168.4.1 in a browser to bring up the interface here. We can see the select target with the refresh button. If we click that, it'll do a site survey and present us with all the 2.4 gigahertz access points in range so that we can target our attack at a specific access point. These are the attacks that are implemented. This is the handshake, a PMKID, or a standard denial of service. Uh, down here, we can see that uh, if we turn off the warm cold, we've got FFF. You can see it turns blue, so we can still control the lighting color and credit where credit is due. So let's jump into taking the light bulb apart. Okay, so the first thing we need to remove is the diffuser bulb on the top here, and I'm just gonna twist it to break the seal and then pop it off. And that exposes our LED board. So now we need to get this LED board out. What I'm going to use is an X-Acto knife and a small screwdriver. There's silicon around the ring on the edge here. We're going to have to peel that all the way and lift this board out. And it's connected through this eight pin connector. That's a through hole. So they're actually sticking up. And so I'm going to stick the screwdriver in there and gently pry it up. This takes a lot of time and finesse. We don't want to mess up our antenna on the ESP32 here. So we got to be careful of that. Uh, but ultimately this whole LED board should lift straight up. The control board is siliconed in at the base. So it should stay there. There's two wires connecting to uh, the contact points down here where it derives power from. So we got to make sure we don't rip that out when we're taking out our LED board. All right, and there we can see it's loose. Now we should be able to reach in and grab the board and unplug this little eight pin connector. There we go. We can see the silicon holding it in the base has already come up. So we've got about a half an inch of play there and it'll give us enough room to get to our solder pads. So let's get our soldering station all set up. All right, so in order to interface with the control board, I'm going to be using one of these USB to TTL serial adapters. You can get these on Amazon for about eight bucks. We're not going to be using the 5 volt pin, we're going to be using 3.3, so there's only four pins that we need to connect. Basically, what we're going to do is connect 3.3 to 3.3, we'll connect ground to ground, and then on here, RX will go to the TX on the converter, and TX from here will go to RX on the converter, so you swap those on the way in. The only other connection we're going to make is to IO9 here, we're going to ground that. The reason we do that is to drop it into DFU mode so we can flash that new firmware. So in order to achieve that, I've stripped back and tinned all five of the points here. I added this little wire coming off of the ground so that I can push this to IO9 to ground it out to drop it into DFU mode. So after stripping back the tips, I tinned them all so they're ready to go. Next, I'll put a little bit of solder on each of these four pads and IO9 and then solder those wires on. All right, so at this point, we've got our USB to TTL all wired in. You can see the wiring pinouts here. Um, basically, now we are ready to plug this into the computer. So let's jump over to that. Okay, so now that we've plugged our USB to UART adapter into this Windows 10 machine here, looking in the device manager, we can see that the driver for it's not loaded. So we're just gonna Google CP2102 USB to UART driver, and we'll click the first result here. We'll go to the downloads page and we'll download the universal Windows driver and install that. And the way we'll install that is after unzipping it in our downloads folder, we'll go back to the device manager, double click on the device, hit update driver, and navigate to that folder we just created. 
and now we can see that we are connected on COM3. So now we want to verify that we're hooked up to the light bulb. So we're going to go back to Google and we'll search for ESP tool. And we'll go to the GitHub here. We'll go to the tags. We'll scroll down. I'm going to pull down version 4.7.0. So I'll just scroll down here and download the Win64. So after extracting it, I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to copy the path. Do Windows R, CMD, we'll open a command prompt, I'll say CD and I'll paste. And in this directory, we'll do esptool.exe space flash underscore ID. And here we can see that it's connected to our ESP32C3 chip on COM3. So this is good, we've got an interface, we are ready to flash the firmware. So now we'll pull up Hack5Peaks GitHub. We'll go to the Hackers Nightlight repo. We'll go ahead and download a copy of this. And then in the flashing section of the readme, we'll follow this link to download the flash tool. Now we'll unzip both of these. And in here, we'll launch the flash tool. We're gonna set the chip type to ESP32C3. The work mode to develop and the load mode on UART. Now we'll click the ellipses on the first row here. We'll go back to the source code that we downloaded. We'll navigate to the bins folder and we'll pick bootloader.bin. And here on the second line, we'll load up partitions.bin. And on the third line, firmware.bin. Now for these offsets, this is gonna be 0x0. The second one is gonna be 0x8000. And the third one is gonna be 0x10,000. Then we're gonna make sure that we check all three of these boxes. We're going to change the SPI mode to QIO, and down in the COM port here, I'll drop down this and select COM3. And now we'll click Start. All right, now once it says Finish, we can go ahead and close this. We'll pull the light bulb out and jump back over to the bench. All right, now that we're done flashing the firmware onto the control board, I'm going to use the soldering iron and remove the five wires. Okay, now that we've removed the wires, we're just going to examine the solder pads real quick, make sure nothing's touching, everything looks to be good. So we'll drop the control board into the little groove that's cut out for it, and then we'll slam our LED ring on top. All right, with everything nice and snug, we'll put the diffuser bulb back on. And now we should have a functioning hacker's nightlight. Let's plug it in and test it out. All right, here we can see we've got our nightlight all turned on, and we've got the iPad here connected to a Wi-Fi network that pops up called Nightlight. The password is Nightlight12345 with the capital N. And in the browser, we go to 192.168.4.1, and here we can see we've got our Hacker Nightlight interface. So everything is up and running. Okay, so the last thing we'll look at is in the source folder in components in Wi-Fi controller and Wi-Fi controller.cpp. We can see lines five and six here define the SSID and the password. So if you want to modify those, you need to come into this file, change them to what you want them to be. Then you need to recompile and flash the compiled binaries that you make not the binaries that ship in the bins folder. All right, so hopefully at this point, you guys have a functioning smart light bulb with a malicious firmware. As always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.